heart's running faster. You know, I was looking at this form and it was like, man. So, you know, from that point on, I'm like, wow. <laughs> this is probably what I should do. You know, literally it was a physical reaction to seeing forms and shapes and stuff. When you hit them just right, it's just like a perfect chord in music. My name is David Newton. I'm a sculptor working in Dallas, Texas, and I work on monumental bronze sculptures. You know, been able to put those forms together in a way to get that feeling, and if I could get it for me, you know, I said maybe I can make other people kind of feel this too. So that's when I really, really started taking it seriously. You basically, all the artists you read about, you're reading about them because they are successful, right? <laughs> so you have a sense that yes, you can be successful at this thing, but you're also, when you read their biographies, you're always reading the struggle. To me, success was can I get a commission? You know, can I do public art? Like, you know, the great artists that I respect, like a Rodin or a Michelangelo or a Canova. In my field, that is success. When you are chosen in a competitive arena to produce artwork for your culture, to me that is success. I had just, you know, finished Friedman's Memorial, since I'm African American, that dealt specifically with my culture. And then the Vaccaro project came up. So I definitely wanted to work with, I wouldn't have felt comfortable working on a Vaccaro, something that meant that much to the Latino community. And you know, people of Mexican descent without being teamed up with someone from that, from that community, I don't think it would have been right. You know, it all, de all depends on the kind of art you make. Cause some artists, their work is more introspective and it's more about their inner psyche and their own uh, relationship to the, their outside environment. And then you have some artists that are almost the opposite. They're looking at the world and they're saying, well, you know, I can use my artwork to make this better or to expose this. And both those approaches are legitimate and you need both kind of artists. So you have to look at the individual's character as well as their artwork. And, um, you know, when those, two things kind of match, then you can have a, a working relationship. Well, I think um, I had kind of a strict religious upbringing. So, you know, when I was young, I thought about I was gonna go into the ministry at some point or, you know, do something in that area. So when I really was re-evaluating how to do that, it seemed like art kind of fulfilled that that kind of vision I had of how I wanted to live my life and how I wanted to be have a positive impact on other people is not necessarily you have to stand in a public in a pulpit and preach right so I was like you know I really want to give this a chance I'm gonna you know you, you're only young once right so you try what you can and I just you know it just happened I was blessed enough to get that first job that led to the next to the next so I'm just kind of been riding that roller coaster ever since Well, you know, I think the people that's going to affect the most are other, hopefully, young artists that are in that decision-making part of their life where they're saying, is this viable for me? Can I make it? Is there a chance for me to do what I, you know, follow my dreams and still, you know, be able to, to make a living? So that's why I don't want to really sugarcoat it and say, oh, come on, jump in, the water's fine because it's gonna take soul searching on that person's part and they're really gonna have it. It is a life-changing decision, there's no doubt about that. Your life will not be the same once you choose to make art your profession. So I'm hoping that they will kind of, you know, get some of that, that angst and self-introspection that's needed to really make that decision in a wise manner.